RuPaul's Drag Con presents our first panel. Well, hello and welcome to our panel. Men, a work in progress. Now, we're gonna be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Speaking of ugly, do you want to meet our panelists? <laughs> <laughs> we have Miss Lady Camden. Hello, you sexy bitches. <laughs> we have Miss Willow Peel. Hello, darlings. And of course, Miss Angeria. But you can call me Angie. <laughs> <laughs> now, the topics at hand, we are going to be talking about hot men, mm -hmm, fatherhood, and relationships and sex. Mm. So let me tell you, ladies, what makes a man sexy? Now, I can say for me, I love body hair. I like to be exfoliated when I'm giving him a hug. A hug. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've yes. heard you give great That's hugs. That's exactly yes. what I was gonna go for. Now, Willa, what makes a man sexy to you? Well, it's complicated for me because I'm an anarchist who believes men should be punished for their crimes against the world, but I do find them very attractive. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I really like a feminine man. And in the gay community, there's this whole mask for mask thing, which if you don't know means a masculine man looking for another masculine man, like Ross and Carson. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, but I like femininity. There are people that actually like to call me a drag lesbian <laughs> because I actually like to date other drag queens. Oh, kickity yeah. kai Yeah, it's okay. something that I think is so sexy about a man that I can share a wig with. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Now, let's do something fun. Who is your celebrity crush? Blake Lively. Blake. That's a... Uh... <laughs> you mean Blake Shaw? Oh. Blake, Blake Shelton. Shelton. <laughs> 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 Didn't even get the man's name right. I love Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> Baby! Yes. I need a man that can handle a love seat or a futon or two, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have noticed in the recent years, though, dad bod has kind of become the quintessential ideal body. Trendy. And that's going to lead me to fatherhood. Now, Miss Angeria, how is your relationship with your father? Well, I actually have an amazing relationship with my dad. He's accepted me being gay and doing drag, and that is a lot, especially yes. where I come from. You know, I'm from Sparta, Georgia, baby, and that is very rare, and I just feel like there are men out there who are led to believe that loving your gay child somehow makes you less masculine. Well, I'm here to tell you that it does not. Period. What about you, Willow? Well, my dad died when I was 11. Oh, babe. And it was hard because we had a rocky relationship. I could tell that he knew that I was gay. And it's not hard when, you know, I run around wearing a sequin headband as a bra. Does it still fit? <laughs> yeah, I wore it for my inches. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. I just want to say to, like, any parents out there, don't wait to embrace your child or figure out what's going on with them. Just do it now. Yeah. Because there might not be a later. Life took that away from me and my dad. What about you, Camden? You know, I'll admit, I definitely hid a lot of who I am from my dad from a young age. And so I always lived in this fear of what he would say, what he was thinking. So I almost trained myself to be cautious. A lot of those feelings came back up when I started to do drag. I felt very like, I don't want him to know who this is. When he found out, he called me up and he said, I love you, but I'm so heartbroken that you held this from me. So I think sometimes it's up to the child to be open and willing and ready to receive that love, because sometimes your fear is holding you back, right. which it was for me. Yeah. So. I actually do not have a relationship with my father at all. Um, I do remember specifically, I was eight years old, and I remember calling a boy cute. My dad chased me around the yard, beat my ass, and told me, you do not say that about a boy, because I, I'm not going to raise a pussy. And that stuck with me up until maybe I was 18 when I came out, even though the world knew, hello, I am gay. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation because it's not the child's responsibility to make their parent feel comfortable. Also, I want to see more dads in drag. Yes, yes totally. Yes, more drag queens that look like Deja. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's single? Oh, OK, we all lonely. Got it. Now, Willow, is this my choice? Yeah, I mean, I've never had sex or been in a relationship because I only do anal. Okay. But, <laughs> no, on a serious note, I do find dating difficult because out of drag, I'm not a very confident person. I have a chronic illness and it makes me look really young 
and a little like sickly. So I feel like out of drag, I look like a sad Victorian doll. <laughs> and then in drag, I look like a sad Victorian doll, but with uh, whore makeup. Ah. <laughs> and then I also have a disability in my fingers and my wrists. So I give really bad hand jobs, yeah. which is tragic. I heard that about you. Yeah. You know something that I think is so difficult about dating these days? Hooking up. And I think oh. it's because you don't see many men working for it. Getting sex these days is like ordering a pizza. You just call it in and it shows up at your door 15 minutes hot and ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's open the floor for some final thoughts. Well, we call this men a work in progress because it really is. I mean, Truly. this is all fun to talk and joke about, but this is gonna be work for generations to come yes. so that the people coming don't have to feel a lot of this pain mm -hmm. that we've talked about. And we talk about it in a fun, humorous way, but the pain really is there. And we don't, we don't want that for the rest of the world. Not at all. And it's gonna take a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. And to my dads out there that are listening, man up, take responsibility, and love your child. Yeah. And if you need a date, call date. <laughs> <laughs> If you're Blake Lively, don't call me. Don't call Camden. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us for our DragCon panel. I want to thank our panelists. Thank you guys, Camden, Willow, and Angeria. And of course, I was your host, Mastasia Sky. Good night. Bye. I think that my team knocked it out the park. I don't know what the other team finna be giving, yeah. but they definitely got some competition on this one. Welcome to the second panel of the day, Men, Electric Boogaloo, Part 2. <laughs> now with more men. <laughs> when I think of men, I, so many questions come to mind. Questions like, why? <laughs> For what? <laughs> and honestly? <laughs> so I'm going to need a little bit of help. Let's meet our panel. We have the multifaceted yet complex Ooh. talents of Diabetti. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. You're so welcome. The incredibly quiet and subtle Jasmine Kennedy. Me? <laughs> I all. <laughs> and maybe she's born with it, or maybe she's born for this. <laughs> it's Georges. <laughs> the Lotus. <laughs> and I will be your moderator today, Bosco. Let's talk about how men navigate the world in a section I'd like to call You've Got Male Privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine, do you think it's easier for men than... Oh my god, yes. Oh no. my god. <laughs> men have it so much easier than women. I can go on a tangent, but I'm gonna keep it short and sweet today for y'all. <laughs> but basically, uh, male privilege is kind of this thing that's kind of fundamental in society. It's taught to us at a very, very young age. If you could think it back to like middle school, men have the privilege to kind of wear and get to do whatever they wanted to do. But women, I mean, God forbid, if they wore a spaghetti strap, or a skirt a little too low, you know? I think right now in society, we put too much pressure on how women, or children or women are supposed to look. It, like, the dress code isn't there technically, so I think it should really be taught that a woman can wear whatever she wants and she shouldn't be judged for it. I remember being at parties, hearing guys talk about, you know, their numbers, how many girls oh they God. slept with, and everyone was <laughs> rallying around them being like, yeah, bro, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And if a girl were to be doing that, mm -hmm. she was slut shamed immediately. And that's, that's kind of something that is taught at a young age yeah. and brought into adulthood, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, so what we're trying to say is this is something that follows them from boys to men. Yeah. Yes. 90s dad. <laughs> I don't think every man is just like walking around like utilizing their male privilege as a weapon. Yeah. I feel like a lot of it comes from like a societal expectation. And I feel like sometimes that expectation is internalized yes. and turns into something that Britney Spears might call toxic. <laughs> which is gonna bring us to our next topic, which is toxic masculinity. I feel like drag queens have a very nuanced relationship with toxic masculinity. George, I wanna yes. talk to you in particular. You've told me that your dad is like a really big fan yes. of you and your drag. Yes. Has he always been so supportive of your feminine side? Honestly, I knew about toxic, masculin toxic masculinity at a very young age. I mean, when my mom was crowning with me, little did she know she was gonna get a big old queen. <laughs> and I used to walk around my house on my tiptoes with my hip out, dancing all over the place. And my dad and grandpa really tried to suppress that at a really young age. And I never really understood why until doing this panel and being here at DragCon. Yeah. Um, it was all out of fear. And honestly, 
he came to one of my shows. He saw how happy it made me. He saw that the people that I around that I was around were so positive, and he saw the money that I was making too yeah. to take care of myself. Yeah. And after the show, he was like, "You know what? That's my boy. Like, I'm so very proud of him." When I came out, my parents were like, "Okay, we can still love you, but like, don't." talk about it. My dad in particular was like, don't talk about it. I don't want you to be unsafe. I don't want your siblings to be unsafe. Yes. And I feel like that came from a place of fear and that made him feel insecure in his masculinity and it made him feel scared for me. And like, I feel like my dad's like on the right track. Like he loves me, he's supportive, but like he's still not quite there. Like he still calls drag my dancing. He hasn't gone to my shows. So I feel like Drag is like the antidote to this toxic yes. masculinity though. I think he just needs to see all of this and then like we'll really get to that next step. Yes. Bitch, if you're toxic and toxic and masculine, bitch, meet me outside in the parking lot. I have a couple of words. <laughs> She's small and feisty. Yeah. It's gonna work. Well, I feel like we've spent a lot of time kind of bashing on men so far. So I wanna flip this around. I got it. So we've talked about turn-offs. Let's take this to turn-ons for our final segment. Yeah. Ha men's zizzes. I believe that's plural. <laughs> Let's turn this over to our resident dick dog, <laughs> Diabetti. That's me. Yeah, yes, you're an expert you. on this, girl. Thank Tell me you. what turns you on. Well, okay, the first turn on I remember was watching WWE. You got the the Chris Jericho's, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Beja, <laughs> you know, John Cena. I was always so enthralled watching them on the TV, getting nose to nose, drenched in sweat. You know, they wore little tiny outfits. And I always noticed they had rock hard nipples. Okay. I made it my mission. Like the first week in college, I'm like, I'm gonna find my WWE <laughs> SmackDown wrestler. And now, right now, this point of my life, I need a man with a mind like Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> um, and then someone with nipples like Carson Kressley. Wow. Yes. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Jasmine, what about you, my friend? My turn on? Yeah, oh my tell God. me what turns you on. I mean, I know this is like geeky, but I love a gamer. I oh love yeah. someone who gets down, you know, at 12 o'clock at night, just gaming all night. It's just like, I don't know, it's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Georgia. Oh my God. Tell I'm, me about your turn on. I love a guy who's way taller than me. I like to feel small, itty bitty. How are you going to find a guy taller than okay. you? <laughs> and you're really asking yeah. for the world over here. <laughs> but I love my guys with the como se dice sabor, you know? Flavor, God. I like my guys a little bit like heftier and furrier. Like if y'all are building a man, I'm building a bear for <laughs> sure. Like that's what it does it for me. I like somebody who's like a love seat that walks around. That's what does it for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for our panel, Men Electric Boogaloo 2. <laughs> now with more men. Ooh. My name is Bosco. We have Georges, Jasmine, and Diabetti. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want gay? Sh Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.